Okay, Mr. Bartoletti here, boys and girls, with Diva and Flea. And we basically yesterday entered Les Preneurs and Tract. That's, oh, there it is. That sort of means, um, it can mean the first break or the first intermission, like in the movies, when there's like one movie playing, it's very long, like Lawrence of Arabia or Gone to Win. Um, they'll go ahead and they'll have an intermission. And of course, there's an intermission if there are two movies also. In the old days, they used to show Three Stooges and cartoons and like that, but that was a long time ago. Anyway, so Le Premier Entracte, let's get going. And now, we're at chapter four, and it is titled, believe it or not, Feet. And it looks like they're both inside the apartment complex. Interesting, I shall read. Uh, chapter four, Feet. Pied. After Diva and Flea had shared their first laugh together, Diva invited Flea to visit her courtyard every day. Interesting. Diva would stand by the gate as Flea told stories about the underground rooms on wheels and the people who drink coffee all day, the piece of salami and the broom that missed, and many of his uh, and more of his many adventures. It was pretty good, huh? I wonder what's inside. I can see apartments are inside. They're pretty ritzy, pretty fancy, huh? Next one. Oh, those are the feet, boys and girls. Diva had never thought about the world beyond her courtyard until she heard Flea's amazing stories. She especially liked the one about the tower so tall and so pointy that it could cut a cloud in half, like a knife slicing through a soft piece of delicious cheese. Diva loved cheese. And of course... He's talking about Le Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. And notice how the author describes it. It's a tower so tall and pointy that it could cut a cloud in half, like a knife slicing through a soft piece of delicious fromage cheese. Very descriptive. I hope your poetry is being descriptive like that. For Diva, just inside her courtyard gate was the most wonderful place on earth for listening to Flea's stories. There, the sun warmed her fur, and his stories warmed her imagination. But then, as often as not, she would hear the ominous click-clacking of feet, either entering or exiting the apartment building. Diva was a small dog, smaller than a person's foot, eh, pretty much. The way a foot tended to come crashing down from the sky made her aware of just how squishable she was. Uh oh. The fact that fear, excuse me, the fact that feet usually traveled in pairs, that means two at a time, did not help things one bit. As soon as she heard the telltale click clacking, Diva, Diva would yell, Feet! and run away. Wow. After enough time had passed, Diva would slowly return to the courtyard. Then, Flea would resume his story. That is, until the telltale click-clacking returned. Diva couldn't help but yell, Feet! and run away again. It was who she was. I like telling you my stories, Fleet told Diva with a smile, but they sure take a long time to finish. Now, we're going to go ahead. I don't know. I mean, should we read chapter five? I guess we could. That was a short chapter. Chapter five, Sonk. One day, oh, it's called A Big Thought. One day, after he had finally told the story of the store where the man roasts whole chickens and could learn a thing or two about sharing... Flea said, well, time for me to go. Oh, where will you go when you go? Asked Diva curiously. Ha <laughs> ha, where won't I go when I go where I go? Replied Flea proudly, because don't forget, he is a flaneur. He basically goes where he wants to. And look, I'm so proud. How am I supposed to know where you are, where you won't go when you go, when I don't know where you do go when you go? asked Diva. 
By now, their little dog and big cat brains were very confused. Unsure of what to do next, Diva thought of yelling, Feet! and running away. But there were no feet anywhere to be seen, so G Diva just stood there. Ah, you should join me one day, said Flea suddenly. You could be a flaneur like me. Ah, okay, what is a flaneur? asked Diva, worried that it might be a type of mouse catcher. Flea explained that a flaneur is someone, or some cat, or maybe even some dog, who wanders the streets and bridges and alleys of the city just to see what there is to see. And a great flaneur has seen everything, but still looks for more, because there is always more to discover. And he's right. I like doing that in downtown L.A. and other, part, other parts of L.A. I am a great flaneur. Flea said with his tail raised high. That is how I discovered Vu, you. But little dogs like me are not flaneurs, said Diva certainly. Eh, there are always exceptions, replied Flea. They are what make you exceptional. Diva thought about being a flaneur. Simply imagining the big buildings and the giant parks and the wide avenues and the tower that could cut a cloud in half made her shiver. <gasps> The world was larger than she had thought possible, and it was all right there on the other side of the courtyard gate. That was a big thought for a little dog. Un petit chien? I think so. Well, 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 here I am, and I'm back. Yeah, basically, um, he's inviting her. He's saying, you know what? Let's go outside and see the world. There's many things to be seen out there, many things. And you know what? My prediction is she's going to do it because she's kind of adventurous, a little bit um, afraid at times, but can you blame her? She's a small dog. She doesn't want to see feet going like that. Would you if you were a dog? I don't think so. Is my cat around here? No, I think both of them are sleeping. What do you expect? Anyway, um, okay, boys and girls. So that's um, today's, of course, um, story time. I hope you, you worked on your poems yesterday. I think you did, and I hope you tried to put them like I told you, not to write them in lines, like a sentence like that, but to write the Eiffel Tower, strong, majestic, cutting the clouds as if they were sweet, delicious cheese. Try and go ahead like I said, next time if you didn't, I'm asking you now, Mr. B says it, I need you to do that. Don't say, I'm done, I'm finished, if you just write like that. Mm -hmm. Do what's right, because you're first graders. And you know what? Not far from, not long from now, I should say, or far, you're going to be uh, second graders. I want your teachers to tell me, Mr. Bartoletti, what? That student of yours, what? He or she? Yeah. Boy, that student knows how to write well, read well. We're doing poems, and that student went ahead and did poems the way you taught the class. Oh, really? Okay. And that student listens and follows class goals. Oh, really? I'm proud of that student. And when you do things the best you can, and you listen to me, um, call her Mrs. Payne, Miss Palmer, if you see her, and to your parents, grandparents, nannies. It makes me proud of you because you're doing your best. You just don't say, I'm done, I'm finished. And you're not. You say, no, I need to finish this the right way. I want my parents and my teacher to be proud of me. I hope you do that. So we'll be back next time with Devin Flea. We'll see what happens. My prediction is she shall venture. She shall venture. Lafayette, we have come. <laughs>